So there's a lot of people that think you can't take high magnification macro photography handheld. With today's technology, I'm here to show you differently. My name's Pete Burford. I'm an OM System Ambassador, and I've partnered up with Lauer Lenses to show you in this macro masterclass how I take high magnification handheld macro photography out in the field. So let's talk about the equipment I use. The equipment I'm currently using is your own system EM1 Mark II camera body. Now I've had this for a couple of years. It's got great in-body stabilization and micro four third sensor. The lenses I tend to use is the own system 90 millimeter two times macro lens. And by two times, I mean, it can go all the way to two to one uh, magnification, which is great for macro photography. Um, it also has um, image stabilization within the lens too. So when paired up my camera, it means that my camera can be a lot more stable when taking these shots. Now, don't worry if you haven't got in-body stabilization or lens stabilization, because you can still take very sharp images handheld with your camera that you've got. Um, I'll explain this in a minute. The other lenses I tend to use is the Lauer 50 millimeter two times macro lens. Now, this is a 50 millimeter focal length, which means it's great for traveling. It's a very compact, small lens, but you still can get that two to one magnification. It's also only a manual lens, which means that you can really tweak where you want the focus. Um, another lens I've also been using for the past year is a 60 millimeter macro lens from OM Systems. Now this is a one-to-one -one lens, but I used to attach a Raynox DCR 250 to the front of it, which would make it near enough a 1.5 to one, two to one lens. So I could get really close to the insects. And that was basically my workhorse for the whole of last year. I also use the cotton carrier harness, which means that I can be able to grab leaves and branches that have certain insects on without having to worry about my camera swinging into them or swinging out of the way. It's also a lot more comfortable than the strap around my neck. So this is why I've got one of these. Very, very comfortable thing to wear. Very happy I've got this and I, I never take it off. Now you might think, why do I need a flash diffuser when I'm out in the sun taking photos of insects? Surely there's enough light. Now with high magnification macro photography, the more you magnify in, the more depth of field you lose, but also the more light you use. Now us macro photographers combat this by having our own light source. Now I've got the Godox V863 flash on top with the Cygnus Tech diffuser. Now the reason I have a diffuser is because it creates a nice soft light over the insect. If you just use the normal flash, it'll completely blow out all the details of the insect and you'll get a very harsh lighting on your insect and in your image. So if you use a diffuser, as I'll show you here, it spreads the light evenly over the insect and creates more of a natural light and it also brings out a lot more details than in natural light. So this is why you want a diffuser. But when we're doing handheld photography, we get a lot of camera shake, a lot of movement. Now with the diffuser and the flash, it will help freeze the motion within the frame. Now I can go up to a shutter speed, I think of one to 50 of a second um, to sync with this flash. Um, so then when I'm taking the photo, the flash will burst off and it will freeze the frame. Now this is how it stops camera shake, stops your hand moving. So if you haven't got a flash, you're not going to be able to do handheld photography very well out in the field. So now that I've gone over the type of equipment I use, I think it's good to go over the type of settings. Now I'm going to talk about single shots because when I'm stacking, I'm normally doing that in the early morning or late evenings when insects are more still. So when we're out and about in the middle of the day and insects are flying around pollinating or eating prey, and they're the kind of shots that we want to get, it's predominantly single shots that I depend on. Now, whether I'm stacking or doing single shots, I've got my camera set to manual mode. This means that I've got complete control over everything. I don't use auto ISO or anything like that. And one of the main factors when coming to macro photography is aperture. Now, with aperture, the smaller the aperture, the more diffraction we get. And diffraction is when the image starts to soften. But what we want to do is have a nice balance between sharpness and depth of field. Now, I know with this 90 millimeter lens that f8 is the sharpest that I use for stacked images. So from there, I upped the aperture to f13 and found that to be a good sweet spot between sharpness and depth of field. Sometimes I will bump it up to f16 if the insect is quite small, but predominantly it's f13. Um, with ISO, I keep it as low as 200. This is the lowest on the Home Systems camera, is its native ISO. The reason for this is, is because I want to limit as much noise as possible, because the more noise we have, the less clear the image looks. Um, 
my shutter speed, I keep that to one two hundredth of a second. Now I know I can go to one two fiftieth of a second with this camera, but I think that's a bit of an overkill because I know that the flash will compensate for that and it will freeze the frame. Another thing, I like to set my lens to one to one in manual mode and I move the camera forwards and backwards till I see the insect's eyes in focus and take my shots. I also have my shutter set to um, slow burst mode. Now taking single shots one at a time, by the time it's flown off, you may have taken one or two shots and you've lost focus on the eyes. Now what I like to do is hold down the shutter in slow burst mode and take as many photos as I can, front to back, all around, till I get as many as I can and it flies off so that the opportunity is gone. When I look back, out of those 10 to 20 photos that I've taken, there's got to be at least one where the eyes are in focus. So this limits the chance of losing the opportunity when finding an insect that you really want to take a photo of. Another thing is that I want to point out is when it's sunny like today and you're out shooting with a flash and diffuser, you want to make sure that you're shading the insect when shooting with a flash because if sunlight is on the insect, then the flash cannot overpower the light from the sun and you get quite a blurry image. So you want to make sure it's shaded. So what I tend to do is use my body to shade the insect and take the photos and they'll come out nice and clear. You might get a bit of a tan neck from this, but if you look at all macro photographers, we've got tan necks, but nothing else. So that's the way that I do it and they're the kind of tips that I use. So let's talk about technique, because when doing macro photography handheld, we need to be as stable as we can. So by doing this, we can turn ourselves into a human tripod. Now, one way I like to do this is either shooting one hand or two handed. I like to find the insect on the leaf. I slowly move my diffuser over the insect. I push the camera straight into my head and I shove my elbows down into my hips. Now I use this as kind of stabilization because it's like a tripod and I move backwards and forwards till I get the insect at focus. I have my focus set to one to one manually so that it stays at one to one. And instead of moving the focus ring, I like to push back and forth till I see it in focus. Once I see it in focus, I hold the shutter button down um, and take as many shots as I can. I then look back and there's got to be at least one out of 20 of those shots to have the eyes in focus. So when I'm looking around for insects, one of the main things I look at are flowers. Now most insects are pollinators, so you've got bees, wasps, flies, hoverflies, stuff like that. They'll be going in and out collecting pollen. Now if you move slowly enough, they're too bothered about getting pollen and nectar than they are with you. If you start waving your camera around or moving really fast or brushing the bush that they're on, they will fly away. So we've got to be careful and we've got to move slow. Now, when I'm crouched in this position, this is one of the ways I like to stabilize my camera and turn myself into a human tripod. Now, I've got my one knee up like this and my one knee crouched down like that. I put my one arm on this leg with the camera in to stabilize the camera. And then I put my elbow on the other leg and stabilize the lens barrel. Now, like I said before, I've got my camera set to manual focus at one to one and I'm pushing forwards with the lens just slowly till I can see everything in focus. Now we have to also remember that we're not going to get the shot we want straight away. With macro photography, it's a lot to do with patience and determination to get the kind of shots that you want. Now, I know they're going to be flying in and out. I'm mostly going to get the back and the wings of them flying out, but there may be times where they come out with a face coming forward. So we've just got to take our time really watch the insect and watch its behaviors and see how it acts. And that's how we'll know when we're able to get the shot that we want. So when taking high magnification macro photography handheld, it's not only hard to take photos of the insects, but it's also hard to spot them as well. So I'm going to go over quickly the kind of environment you want to be in to find these subjects. So somewhere where there's a body of water, like a fishing pond or a river, you'll find a lot of damselflies and dragonflies hatching out of there and flying around. You'll also find at night time that'll be roosting around the pond at night on the reeds, which makes it really easy to do stacked images. Also looking at bushes like nettles and stuff like that, you'll find a lot of nursery web spiders, wolf spiders, um, ladybirds, stuff like that, kind of chilling on the leaf that you'll be able to get photos of. So I find somewhere like this is a really good place to start out taking macro photography photos handheld at high magnifications. So you don't just find insects on leaves and pollinating with flowers, you also find them on the ground. Now a lot of the time you'll find beetles and spiders running around on the path that you're walking on at certain nature reserves and stuff like that. You will find that they're walking and they'll stop, walking and stop, and I think this is a way of them navigating themselves. So when they're stopping for those few seconds, that's when you can get the photos. Now you're going to need a lot of patience for this because as soon as they feel the vibration of your knees hitting the ground, then they will run away or they'll turn in a different direction. Now I've been sat there for two to three hours taking photos of tiger beetles, waiting to get the shot that I want because every time I got close and I got the eyes in focus, they turn around or they fly away and they're notoriously hard to take photos of, especially when there's a lot of heat and sun. But what I suggest doing is 
to add more stability, you can just put the camera straight on the ground in front of the insect and flip your LCD screen up into position. And you can then see from an overhead view the focus that you need to get and you can move backwards and forwards. Now I would suggest um, if the insect is moving around quite a lot to not go full magnification, so maybe one to one. If the insect's pretty still, then you can do higher magnification, maybe two to one, but then you probably have to stack because of the depth of field will be so narrow. But with this extra stability of being able to put it on the floor or put it on your hand, um, you'll be able to take stacked images no problem. Um, there is another way. If you haven't got an LCD screen that does flip out, you can just lie on your front on your belly. This is one way to really stabilize yourself and be able to look through the viewfinder. Um, as long as you keep your elbows on the ground and you push backwards and forwards with your head, you'll get the stacked images that you want that are pretty clear. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's how I take photos on the ground. So as I said earlier, the more we magnify in, the more depth of field we lose. This is why I personally keep my lens magnified in at one to one. Um, so I can get the right amount of depth of field for a portrait shot or just the insect itself. So most of it is in focus. Now it might not be close enough to have a portrait shot. So what I will do is crop in afterwards so that I've got the depth of field, but then it also looks a lot closer and see all the details. Now this has a 21 megapixel sensor, which means I have a lot more freedom to be able to crop in um, and compositionally change the way that the photo looks. Now, some cameras are like standard 24 megapixels now. So the majority of cameras now do have that capability of being able to take a photo and crop in. Now, my subjects will fill up maybe one third of the frame to one to one. The only time I'll go further than one to one is when I'm focus stacking. So when we want to go further than one to one and we start to do two to one or further, which both the Lauer 50 mil and the OM system 90 millimeter can do, um, we have to kind of delve into um, focus stacking. Now we can add even more magnification by adding a Raynox DCR 250 magnifier to the front of your lens, which just clips onto the front and just gets us that a little bit closer to the insect. But two to one for most insects, especially in the UK, is adequate enough. Um, I find that when you put it into two to one, you're gonna lose a lot more stability. A lot of people will use a small tripod of sorts to help out. But what I tend to do is just try and keep myself as stabilized as I can like any other shot that I take. Make sure both my elbows are tight to my body and resting on my legs or on the floor, etc. Um, with this, I use focus bracketing feature, which is on the camera, which means that it takes a series of shots from front to back of the insect at different focal planes. Um, and then I'm able to merge those images in Helicon Focus or Photoshop afterwards. Um, but if you haven't got focus bracketing feature on your camera, no need to worry because you can do it manually. So I set my settings up all to the same as I would with my single shots the only things that i'll change are the aperture and the flash so the aperture will go down to f8 because i know that's the sharpest on this lens so you need to find out what the sharpest aperture on your lens is uh, and the flash i'll lower a lot more because the lower the aperture we use the more light we're letting in so we don't need as much from the flash this also means that it can cycle a lot quicker so you need a flash that can cycle um, fast enough to be able to take these photos now i sent my shutter to high burst mode and this is how I technically would do it if I was manually pushing forward. So I'd find the insect, the front of the insect um, in focus, and then I'd hold the shutter down and push through the insect slowly, just moving millimeter by millimeter, um, take, taking the shots and trying to get every single focus plane in focus like this. Now, sometimes you may miss a frame. So to combat this, I like to go front to back of the insect, back to front, and then repeat that and do front to back, back to front. Now, some people might think that's a bit of overkill, but there's nothing worse than getting home, putting a stack together with really nice composition, and then for it to come out with a blurred line in the middle and you've missed the focus plane. So I make sure that I, you know, cut out all chances with that and just take as many shots as I can, especially when it's a subject that I've been after for a while. So I'm just gonna go through a few things to take away with you today because there has been a lot of information within this video. Number one is patience. You're never gonna get the right macro photo straight away. So make sure you keep at it, keep persistent and keep following those bugs and you will get the photo you're after. Number two, be respectful to the insects and nature itself. Don't be grabbing insects and picking them up to take the photos. Make sure that you limit as much disturbance as you can. I only twist the leaves every now and again or maybe cut off a leaf with an insect in it and make sure I slowly put it back on the leaf or the plant that it came from after I've took the images that I need. Number three, make sure you've got the right equipment. So a macro lens of one-to-one -one or two-to-one like the Lauer 50mm or the Owen System 90mm can produce. 
Another one, which is a big one, number four, is a flash and diffuser. The reason for this is because the flash um, freezes the motion within the frame, so it stops camera shake that is, you know, going to happen when we're doing handheld photography. So that is a definite must. Number five is make sure you do your research. You know, you need to find out where these bugs are, the kind of environment to be in, you know, when they come out from like April to September or even July to September. And also have fun. Now with macro photography, it's all about showing the beauty of insects and nature around us and really showing the biodiversity within it. So just have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously and enjoy yourself. My name's Pete Burford. I'm an OM system ambassador. And I really hope this video helps you to learn how to take high magnification macro photography photos handheld out in the field and really inspire you to get out that dusty macro lens and show the biodiversity of insects. Now it's a really sunny day here today, so I'm gonna go out and take some photos myself. So thank you very much for taking the time to listen and I really hope this helps you on your macro photography journey.